course we do. Hey, Michael, good to see you. Um, last week, Will said that the plan was to, quote, win by committee. Um, without Jamal for the foreseeable future, is that kind of a, a guiding philosophy for you guys uh, as you break for camp uh, tomorrow in San Diego? Yeah, I, I think um, that's on point. Uh, I think Will's mindset is where it needs to be regarding uh, going into this season without Jamal Murray. Um, you know, you go back to last year, Mike, April 12th in Golden State when Jamal suffered that injury. You know, I remember the next day speaking to our team, and, and that was kind of the point I made at that time. You know, we, there is not another Jamal Murray on this team, and I don't want anybody trying to be Jamal. You know, we were going to make up for his loss as a committee as long as everybody brought the best version of themselves. And obviously, 18 games to go after that injury, we went 13-5. and five and we're able to beat the Portland Trailblazers in the first round without our starting backcourt. So uh, I think that was our mindset to finish the season into the playoffs last year. And now as we start this new season, I think that has to be uh, the same mindset. Uh, it is by committee. It is, we're going to need everyone to bring their best every day. And obviously, you know, Nicola had an MVP season last year, but we also need everybody else to step up. And, uh, and I, knowing the group the way I do, Mike, I, I anticipate that happening. Chris Dempsey, Altitude Sports. Good morning, Coach. Um, well, in that light, then, how happy are you that the, the summer was spent basically retaining the entire team, or the, the majority of it anyway, uh, who, who had contract situations? Um, and, and then um, what's your best Jamal Murray uh, update as well? Yeah, well, regarding Jamal, you know, I was, was with him yesterday for a while. Uh, looks great, you know, uh, doing very well in his rehab. Uh, and more importantly to me, Demps, is that he is doing well uh, mentally. You know, I, I think a lot of times we think about a rehab from an ACL injury, and you often go to, okay, well, how is his knee going? Uh, how is it feeling? How's the recovery? Uh, which is important, but just as important to me is the mental side of it. Uh, because as you all know, when you have a potentially a 10 to 12 month recovery, that can be overwhelming. And it's just great to see Jamal in good spirits. Um, he was able to finally go home and see his family, which I think was so important for his recovery uh, and for him to be in the right place mentally as we go into this new season. So uh, on all accounts, both physically and mentally, Jamal is doing well. Um, and I'm proud of him because, you know, this is not an easy road, but he is definitely attacking it the way he needs to. Um, and then your other point, I think, is a really important point and, and something that I take great pride in, as does Tim Connolly and everybody associated with the team. You know, we have a lot of guys that want to be here. You know, you talk about the Will Bartons, uh, the Aaron Gordons, uh, the Austin Rivers, the Jamichael Greens. Guys that could have, you know, maybe gone elsewhere or looked to go elsewhere, uh, but they all wanted to come back. Uh, that speaks to the group that we have, the culture that we have, and kind of a, a common phrase and common theme throughout the summer in our, my discussions with all those players was that we feel that we have unfinished business. Uh, we feel that last year we had a legitimate chance to win a world championship. Then injuries obviously, uh, you know, cropped up at the wrong time uh, and all throughout our roster. Um, so the fact that all uh, four of those players that I mentioned were willing to come back, want to be a part of this, want to see this through with the ultimate goal of bringing a world championship to Denver, uh, I think is really exciting. And then you add on top of that, the signing of a guy like Jeff Green, uh, who I think is going to be a, a tremendous addition to us uh, on the floor, in the locker room, off the court, just in every aspect you can imagine. So uh, really excited about that. Matt Moore, the Action Network. Michael, the last two years have been hard on everyone, but you especially, you had the bubble and that experience, short off season. Last season was difficult, the injuries on top of it. Last time that we kind of talked after the season, you had mentioned that you thought there'd be some carryover from the exhaustion of the last couple of years into this season, do you still kind of feel that? And you personally, how are you in terms of your mentality dealing with 
this extended run of games and, and stress going into a season where you have championship aspirations? Um, yeah, I think we'll be fine going into this year. You know, we were talking last week uh, as a coaching staff and, you know, I had a birthday in September and it was amazing that game seven against the Clippers was just one calendar year ago. And I believe Matt, we are playing parts of three different uh, seasons within one calendar year. You know, we had the bubble, we had the 72 games last year that ended on June 16th uh, and a game four loss to Phoenix. And now we leave for San Diego today uh, to start our training camp for the 21-22 season. Uh, that is a lot of basketball in a short period of time. Um, as we all know, our group has constantly shown how mentally tough they are uh, and how they're not afraid to face adversity. Uh, and I think this year is going to be another uh, challenge for us to, to, to handle those adverse situations. Uh, you look at our first 20 games, we have a very difficult schedule to start, start the season. Um, so it's going to be really important that we get off to a better start than we did last year when we started one and four and we were kind of playing from behind uh, to start the season last year. But um, yeah, I think our guys are ready for that. As for me, uh, I'm ready as well. You know, I was able to spend a quality time with my family to get away, to get balance back in my life. Um, and then all September, our gym was packed. We had a great gym and all uh, throughout September. And that's when you start getting those juices flowing. You get excited to be back in the gym and start your quest once again to try to win a championship. Um, and that's always our goal. We always try to get better every day with the ultimate goal of trying to win a championship. This year will be that much tougher. I think any team in the NBA that loses their second best player, Matt, is going to obviously have a much tougher time of accomplishing that goal. But uh, we also know that we have other talented players. We have an MVP in Nicola and, uh, and guys that are willing to step up and do whatever it takes. Adam Mares, DNVR. Hey, Coach, good to see you, and congrats on tipping off your eighth season here in Denver. Um, I want to ask you about the identity of the team now without Jamal Murray. To what extent do you feel the team needs to find a new identity or parts of a new identity now that he is not there and you have new pieces? And specifically with Michael Porter and Nikola Jokic, do you feel there is a, a two-man game or something similar to what Jamal and Jokic have or, or Barton and Jokic that you feel those two need to forge? Yeah, I think it's seven years. You know, but I like how you okay. think <laughs> seven, but I'll take eight. I mean, talk to Tim Conley on that. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, as far as, you know, Jamal, the injury, our identity, um, it, it kind of stays the same. You know, I mean, obviously our, the, the, the defense and the expectations that we have to be a better defensive team than we were last year, that's going to stay the same no matter who's in the lineup, no matter who's on the floor. Um, so that that has to be the case offensively, obviously, uh, you know, we'd like to play a little bit faster. You know, we were a really efficient offensive team in transition. The problem, Adam, is that we didn't get there. We didn't have uh, enough attempts. You know, we, we were high, high uh, efficiency, low frequency, if that makes sense. So we want to get out and run more and obviously an improved defense, continued quality defensive rebounding will enable us to be a better running team. Um, but um, you know, I, I, for me, your identity can't change when you lose one player. Obviously, if you lose Nikola Jokic, he is a center of everything we do. So that would be a, a, a tough one. But I think we showed in those 18 games after Jamal's injury that we can still be a, uh, a quality defensive and offensive team. Jamal's a great player. Uh, I think he's shown everybody that. So uh, trying to fill that void is tough. And you mentioned something that's really important. We've been one of the best closing teams in the NBA because we had, in my opinion, the best two-man game in the league in Jamal and Nicola. I thought when Jamal went down, I thought Michael Porter really stepped up. I thought he had a tremendous season last year. My humble opinion should have been the most improved player. Um, but Michael's relationship with Nicola on and off the court is growing. It's getting you know, uh, they're getting tighter. They're getting used to each other, reading each other, playing off of each other. You mentioned Will, Aaron Gordon's another guy. You know, that's one of the reasons I'm excited about this training camp is that, 
You know, Aaron Gordon has not had a training camp with us. Austin Rivers did not have a training camp with us. And a lot of the new guys last year, it was such a weird training camp, short training camp. I'm not even counting that. So guys like Faku and Jamichael Green, so on and so forth. Uh, this training camp in San Diego will give us a chance to really allow those guys to further understand who we are and what we're trying to do on a day-to-day -day basis. But uh, I, I think all those relationships on the court will grow as the season goes along. Brandon Cristal, KOA Denver. Hey, Coach, good to see you. Uh, last year when I asked about the culture being, I guess, led or set by Nicola, you, you kind of pushed back and you said that you set the culture and he fit in. But when you mentioned all these guys wanting to come back and the culture, how much of it is Nicola, I guess, woven into the fabric of that coach, culture? Oh, it's a huge part of it. You know, and it wasn't me pushing back. It was just me. You know, I, I think sometimes we have a recency bias. And what I mean by that is, you know, three years ago, Nicola was, you know, was not the embodiment of our culture. And I think once he really kind of figured out that he had to get in great shape, he had to lose weight and kind of change his work ethic, that's when it kind of clicked for him and us. You know, but this is something that we've been preaching since the day I got the job, you know, as Adam said, eight years ago. <laughs> um, you know, being yeah, Nicola is a centerpiece of everything we do. You know, he's an MVP. Um, when you have the best player in the league setting the tone on a daily basis, that is invaluable. And we all feel very fortunate that he is a guy that is willing to embody that culture of being a work team, a team that trusts one another. And it's truly selfless. I mean, he's one of the most selfless superstars you'll ever come across. And I think you guys all understand that. Harrison Wind, DNVR. Hey, Michael, good to see you. Um, how do you balance those, those championship aspirations you talked about with making sure somebody like Nicola doesn't wear out mentally and physically throughout the season? He said a couple of days ago when we spoke to him that he was going to listen to you guys in terms of rest and and load management throughout the season if, if you wanted him to do that so do you have a plan for that or an idea of how you'll kind of approach that throughout the season yeah Nicola says that now we'll see how it, what his response is as we move into the season but obviously we're moving back to an 82 game schedule uh and, and we still have you know aspirations of being a playoff team as you all know that we're the only team in the west that's advanced out of the first round in each of the last three seasons, and hopefully we can continue that trend. And Nicola will be a big part of that, and not just for him. You know, a guy like Jeff Green, uh, who's been in the league since 2007, uh, you know, whether it's Michael Porter, Aaron Gordon, Monte, Will, PJ, whoever it is, I think this year, um, knowing not just the season that we're in, but the cumulative total uh, of the last three seasons, two seasons, that adds up. And we want to do right by our players. We want to be as healthy as we can towards the end of the season. And that's where conversations with myself, uh, our training staff, looking at the schedule and finding days and opportunities where um, we may have to look to rest some guys. Now, when I say that, obviously the NBA is really uh, concerned and I want to make sure that when you are going to rest a player, that is truly needed and we're doing it in the right instances. So we'll abide by the NBA's wishes and make sure we're constantly communicating with them as to what our plan is. Because uh, in all this, uh, it's not just the Denver Nuggets, it's us working with the league to make sure we're giving our fans, not just in Denver, but across the country and around the globe, access to the best players in the world. All right, we got time. <clears throat> we got time for a couple more. We're gonna go with Joel Rush from Forbes. Hey, Coach, good to see you. Um, last week, Aaron Gordon was saying that maybe he was a little bit more injured near the end of the season that than we may have seen, and he was basically playing on one and a half feet. Um, how's he looking in the early runs, and what do you think of fully healthy Aaron Gordon and being in training camp as well may unlock for him and the team this season. Yeah, Aaron, uh, he looks great. You know, uh, he was in and out of our gym all summer long. Um, you could tell he came back great shape. Um, the jump shot, uh, his conditioning, um, and his attitude. You know, that's one thing I mentioned earlier. 
Joel, is, you know, what excites me more than anything was that it was Aaron Gordon and his representation that kind of started the conversation of trying to get a new contract done. Um, we all know how important Aaron was to us last year. And I think when you look at Aaron, you know, you, you can get caught up sometimes in looking at, you know, stats and numbers and efficiency. Well, as Tom Brady said a few years ago, the, the most important stat in a player's efficiency and effectiveness is winning and losing. And, and Aaron Gordon impacted at winning at a high, high level. And the fact that he believes in what we're trying to do here, um, I, I think is tremendous. But he looks great. I, I think him having a complete full training camp with us will only allow him to be more comfortable and, 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 and allow me to find ways to even use him in, in, in varied ways. Uh, he has a unique skill set. He can handle, he can play pick and roll. He was a backup point guard in Orlando at times. Uh, he can play the three, he can play the four. And we all saw in the postseason his ability to guard multiple positions. So he, he's extremely valuable to us. Very happy that he's going to be here for a long time. Uh, and I anticipate Aaron having a tremendous training camp. Ernie Stapleton, Associated Press. Hey, Arnie, we can't hear you here. Sorry, Michael. Um, Porter had a, such a, a leap uh, in the bubble, and then last year took strides in, in other areas of his game. Where do you want him to sharpen or, or focus uh, entering this season? What, what aspects of his game do you think he can, he can really improve on? Um, well, all of us, I mean, even Nicola, who's a reigning MVP, can improve. Uh, that's something I think we're always challenging ourselves as coaches, as well as our players, is to come back better players. Um, you're either getting better or you're getting worse. You never stay the same. Uh, for Michael, I, I, that's what excites me. He's played two years in the NBA. He's put up incredible numbers for a guy that's only played two years in the NBA, and the sky is the limit. Uh, you know, offensively, uh, I, I think he has to be more disciplined in running the floor. Uh, the guy shoots the corner three like a layup, but now we have to get him to the corners more. He's got to be more disciplined in that. Instead of stopping in the middle of the floor or above the break, uh, we're all, every third, each of the 30 teams is trying to generate more corner threes and then transition. That's a great way to get them. Uh, and Michael is uh, highly, highly efficient when he gets below the break into the corner. So he's got to be a more consistent runner and he's got to continue to grow in the area of moving without the ball. He started to understand, okay, I'm playing with the best player in the game, who's also one of the best passers in the game. And if I continue to cut and move without it, I'm such a big target, Nicole is going to find me. Uh, and then defensively, you know, that's something that I know from my conversations with Michael, he wants to continue to grow in. He does not want to be a guy when you get to the playoffs that every team is trying to go at him and put him in the action every possession. He doesn't want to be a liability and he wants to be a player that I can trust at the end of games to close out games when we need a big stop. And, and I love the fact that he's aware of that and he knows that it's not about being a great scorer for us to be the best team that we can be. Michael Porter needs to be an efficient uh, and engaged two way player. And he's aware of that and he's making the necessary strides to become that. And I'm proud of him for that. Matt Moore, the Action Network. Michael, you've been known for your ability to communicate with the players and build relationships, but you've also been forward on various social issues, whether it's gun violence or uh, Black Lives Matter. So I feel the need to ask you this. Uh, what is your comfort level with the team's vaccination rate? And do you have any thoughts on that continuing conversation with the league? Yeah, it's um, what I... What I love to be able to sit here and say to you, Matt, and everybody else on this, that we're 100% vaccinated, that I'd be thrilled about that. You know, uh, you know, the fact is that we're not, and that's all I'll say in that matter regarding who is and who's not. And it's a, it's a delicate balance. You know, uh, it, it is not my place to uh, tell somebody that they have to be vaccinated. It's an individual choice. Uh, obviously, we had our head coach's Zoom call about two weeks ago. And Adam Silver talked about, you know, um, he had hoped to engage the NBPA uh, in talks of trying to 
get every player vaccinated, but those conversations didn't go where we all wanted them to go. So it is what it is. Uh, the only concern I have is that for unvaccinated players, um, this is real. Delta variant is still real, as we all know. I knew I know a few weeks ago, I think 1,500 people were still dying every day from COVID, uh, and, and most notably the Delta variant. So, you know, you, you don't want, you know, unvaccinated players putting anybody at risk, but at the same time, it, it's a, a freedom of choice uh, by each individual in the locker room. And yes, your last question, your last point, Matt, it is something that we'll continue to talk about and just try to help educate. You know, I mean, uh, I know there was a big article recently, I think in maybe Rolling Stone, uh, talking about some of the players throughout the league and the different um, theories as to, you know, why not to get it. And if you did get it, what was going to happen to you? Um, so I think all we can do is try to help educate uh, the players that have chosen to be unvaccinated to this point. And maybe at some point they realize, you know, well, what's at stake and they make that decision to get vaccinated. But uh, until then, we'll keep on trying for sure. All right, we got time for one more. We're gonna end with Mike Singer from the Denver Post. Hey, Michael, first of all, I just noticed uh, the Mickey Mouse ears in, in the corner. So those are pretty sweet. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> looks good, I like it. I wasn't gonna ask you to put them on, but I considered it. <laughs> um, so Monte said last week, uh, it, it's championship or, or bust for us. We, we've gotten to a point where we're not content just making the playoffs. And we actually want to thrive and succeed and reach the finals and obviously raise the raise the trophy at the end. Have you gotten that sense um, from your team and being in the gym and seeing them work out um, that, that everybody has that kind of pervasive mindset uh, that is championship or bust this season? Yeah, I, I don't get the sense. I know for me, it's not championship or bust because you're setting yourself up for a lot of failure. If that's it, like if we don't win a championship this year, it's, it was a wasted season. Uh, I never look at it that way. Um, I think if you're truly serious about being a team that's capable of winning a championship, Mike, it'll be uh, shown every single day at every practice, at every weight session, film session, shoot around, because everybody, there's 30 teams right now talking about winning a championship. The reality is how many are real championship contenders? Um, you know, but that's what everybody does. You know, you start off the season with high hopes, high aspirations. And then for a lot of teams, reality sets in really quick. Um, we've been able to win a lot of games the last three years. Uh, I love the, the path and trajectory that we're on. Um, let's be honest, ha no, having no Jamal Murray is, is, you know, makes that task a lot more difficult. Now, when I say that, that is not saying I don't believe in Monte, Will, Michael, Aaron, Nicola, Faku, Austin, PJ, Jeff, Jamichael, Bones, Vladko, Bowl, Zeke, uh, and I'm probably missing a few players, and I apologize. Um, so it's not championship or bust for me, but that's great if the players have that mindset because that means that every day they're going to push each other and themselves to be the best player and team that we can be. And if we continue to find ways to get better every day, then who knows at the end of the season, we may be in that position to be a team that's able to win a championship. So, um, you know, I, I think we've proven ourselves last three years of who we are, what we're capable of. And hopefully this year is just another example of the Denver Nuggets are a team to be reckoned with, uh, with Jamal Murray or without Jamal Murray. And, uh, you know, that's why training camp will be a great way to get out to San Diego, work every day and, and play the Clippers in Golden State before coming back uh, to get ready for Minnesota in our third preseason game. So um, I'd love to win a championship. You know that, Mike, we were on the podcast last week with you, Tim and I, uh, and that, that's, that's what drives me and drives everybody. Whether it happens this year, next year, or the year after, uh, we'll, we will not be satisfied until that happens. All right, that'll do it. Thank you, Coach. All right, guys, appreciate it.